Take another look at another case study here. Salesforce and the V2 mom method. Visions, values, methods, obstacles, and measures. This framework aligns every employee's efforts with company's vision, making sure everyone's incentives are pulling in the same direction. It's how you turn a good team into a great one. Now, what both of these examples are share with you is that when you get your incentive structure right, the results are off the charts. And when results are off the charts, it takes on a life of its own. You create leadership with inside the ranks. You create incentives within the rank. You create self-policing amongst the ranks that people holding each other to higher, star- higher standards amongst the ranks. You create an environment where your team is motivated, aligned, and focused on one thing, that collectively we got to do our job because we all collectively do our job. The company does their job, and guess what the company's going to do in return when we get to the next level? As agreed upon as we started this incentive program is we get handsomely rewarded whether financially, reputation-wise, recognition-wise, experience-wise, somehow some stock option-wise, somehow some way there's a what's in it for all of us if all of us individually, every department, every person that hold each other accountable gets incentivized, boom, here it is. I like it when the sales force gets along with the cor- corporate home office executive team. They're all on the same page. And that has to do with incentive program. That's what we did here at PHP Agency. When Patrick rolled it out, not only did the sales force have an incentive program, but the home office employees and executive staff had an incentive program that if collectively, if we hit certain goals, then there's going to be some form of cash Bonus being paid out, and that's what gets everybody jacked up, that we're on the same side of the table and working towards the same goal together, and we're all willing to go that extra mile. We're all willing to look out for one another, regardless if we haven't really interacted with by outside of three, four, five phone calls over a period of months, but what we are unified on is the same goal, doing our job in our department, working together. So here's some points here on how to design your comp structure to incentivize your team to go from ordinary to extraordinary. Step one, identify key behaviors and goals. First things first, you need to identify the key behaviors you want to see and the goals you want your team to hit. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there, but it might not be the road to success. Number two, match incentives to behavior. Once you know what you want, design your incentives to directly reward those behaviors. If you want your team to focus on customer satisfaction, they just don't reward sales, reward positive customer feedback too. You get what you pay for, so make sure you're paying for the right things. Number three, balance short-term and long-term incentives. Next, balance short-term wins with long-term success. Sure, hitting monthly targets is important, but if you also want your team invested in the big picture, that's for profit sharing or team trips or stock options or equity ownership, that's where they come in. They keep your team locked in for long-term company goals. Number four, communicate clearly. Your team needs to understand how the comp structure works, why it's set up this way, and how they can maximize their earnings while pushing the company forward. When everyone's on the same page, you create a culture of transparency and trust, and I would also add competition. The last thing I would add to this is accountability. Drive, drive, drive accountability through a leader's bulletin. There's got to be a leader's bulletin for everything. Every department has got to know their numbers. What metrics, what KPIs, what OKRs are going to drive the company? What is everybody focused on? That's like your dashboard when you get in the car. What is that department's objectives and key results? What are the key performance indicators for that particular department? On the sales side of things, the marketing side of things, what closes, what appointments, what follow-ups, what's going to incentivize it, what activities are going to lead to the results. For example, in our company, we tell our guys, there's four behaviors, there's four activities you get paid to do. Everything is just a distraction because these four behaviors, these four activities lead to these four results. These four results, then you get a handsome reward if you create these four results. But these four results don't happen unless these four activities and behaviors actually get incorporated throughout the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, however you want to work your week. Remember, autonomy, However you incorporate these behaviors and activities, guess these four results. And that's driven all the time, not necessarily by you texting everybody or you calling everybody, but there's got to be a unifying leader's bulletin that everybody sees because what holds people accountable is where their name is on that list. And guess what? Back to recognition. A lot of people want to see their name on the list at the bottom or in the middle or in second place. People want to shoot for first place. We tell everybody here at our company, 85% of success is just showing up. Just get here, show up, because sadly, a lot of people won't. And by the way, our sales force, there's part-timers and full-timers. A lot of people just don't show up. Sad. But that's 
autonomy. That's capitalism. That's free enterprise. The thing about capitalism, if you don't improve, you don't get paid. If you don't improve, you don't get the job. So everybody here has to improve. And what's going to re reveal that and show that? Leaders Bolton. And so 85% is just showing up. 50%, the other 50% is just hard work. Well, guess what? The last 5%, that's a dog fight. That brings out the best of the best of the best. I'm just jacked up talking about it. Because I'm ex excited for my opportunity to change my life. That I've given the freedom to do that. That I'm given the autonomy to do that. That I have to master certain skills and behaviors. So therefore, I get the results that I want. And get, guess what? When I get these skills and behaviors and I get all my bills paid for, I get all my distractions taken care of from, from a financial standpoint, guess what I can focus in on? Guess what your team can focus on? Guess what everybody else can focus on? The higher purpose of not only why they're in business, why they're in business with you, but why this company is in business. The purpose behind it that should jack you up. You know, I get jacked up every time I, 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 I see this number. I get jacked up for how much money I pay other people, not me. When I see this number that I paid our guys over $100 million over the last eight and a half years, I'm fired up about that. And sadly, it's not always perfect. Some guys stick with me for the long term. Sometimes people quit because I incentivize the right behavior. And sometimes people that can't keep up with constantly improving, guess what happens to them long term? They end up doing something else, which is okay. And I wish them well. I wish them the best. But if you want to constantly be in a position where you're competing and improving and evolving and growing, then our firm, our agency, our company, our culture, our championship system is going to get people to experience going from ordinary income family to extraordinary life experiences because they're willing to discover the next best version of themselves. And in the process, your company also discovers the next best version of itself too as well.